So nice guy syndrome. I get this a lot with the guys that uh, hire me for coaching. How do I defeat this feeble, nice guy that's within me? I don't know how to break out of it. Uh, uh. Listen, guys, nice guy syndrome. It's funny because these guys are, they're nice on the outside, but on the inside, they're approval seeking leeches. What do I mean by this? And I, I am empathic towards these guys. I used to be somewhat of a nice guy. Um, but the fact of the matter is they give with the expectation of receiving. And for the Christian nice guys out there, this is anti-biblical. Biblical men give out of service. They give because their, their cup is overflowing. There's a great tweet that Michael Foster actually uh, put out yesterday. And I'm actually going to put por a, par a portion of this tweet on the screen right here for the next 30 seconds or so. Uh, really read this and, and soak it in. It is a performance mindset deeply rooted in fiction. It's, it's one of those things where these guys truly expect by when, they, when they're giving, 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 there's this part of their brain, there's this part of their hearts that expects that same treatment in return. This is not giving from a, a position of, of, of generosity. This is giving in an underhanded, manipulative sort of way. And a lot of times these guys cannot look at themselves in the mirror because they fundamentally do not respect themselves. How I broke out of this nice guy mindset is that, and, and this is a commonality with a lot of nice guys out there, is that there's this weird relationship with their mother. They're way too close with their mother. There's almost a codependent relationship with their mother. I'm not saying I had this, but I was definitely, I grew up a mama's boy. And what helped me was moving out and living with my grandfather and being around a man. Because a lot of times these nice guys actually have absent fathers uh, or fathers that are there that are either tyrannical or grown up man children. So there's really no proper example for what a man is and what a man should be. And part of being a man is being able to say no. Another part of being a man is giving without any expectation of receiving at all. This is a mindset that I've had early on is that when I'm going to give to a homeless person, I observe the intentions of my heart. If I go and I give and there's no thought of any kind of reciprocity from the Lord or, you know, I used to think karma, which is anti-biblical. Um, if there's no thought, if it's completely unconscious and I go and I give, then that's great. Praise be to God. There's no expectation. But there are some times, let's say when maybe in the past when business has been slow, I go and I say, oh, how is God going to bless me? I just don't give. The intentions of a man's heart are very, very important. And you need to assess this fundamentally when you're giving yourself to another person. Nice guys say yes way too often and they need to get more comfortable with saying no. And let me tell you, there's no real big sexy solution to this. It's simply repetitiously saying no, getting it wrong sometimes. Because what will happen to a lot of guys is that nice guys stay in their heads and they've completely uh, neglected um, that I firmly believe where God implants the spirit and discernment and wisdom is in a man's stomach. So his knee-jerk reaction is to say yes. He's got to reconnect himself with his heart and with his stomach. And in those, in those situations, and this is an amazing construct of God and how he's built us and our souls and our psyches, when there's situations that arise and we know we need to say no, our stomachs, our spirits know before our heads do. And this nice guy syndrome comes from this overriding of their stomach and their spirit with their psyche and their, and, and their minds, and they say yes. Every man has a right to be wrong. So sometimes you got to say no in times where you should have said yes. It's part of getting messy. Part of growing in your boldness as a man is getting it wrong sometimes. A man like me, I've always been naturally sort of bold. And trust me, I've gotten it wrong a lot of times, but I've always been comfortable stepping into that discomfort. And you have to understand too, you have to reconcile your relationship with the man in the mirror. And so a lot of nice guys can't even look at themselves in the mirror, right? They look up and they don't like what they see staring back at them. And that was my one thing when I broke out of being this nice guy. I was like, how do I feel about the man in the mirror? How do I feel about myself? Am I allowing myself to be trampled over? Is everything in my life a transaction? Because with most nice guys, with all nice guys, it's rooted in a transaction mindset. It's deceptive. It's underhanded. And a lot of nice guys don't even realize this, but they're bitter. They think by, just like it says in that, in that, in, in that uh, Michael Foster tweet, that by being people-pleasing, by bending over backwards, women are going to desire them, men are going to respect them, and that they're essentially going to get ahead in life by doing these things. No, they're not at all. It's just like it says in that tweet, rooted in deep fiction. Women can snuff out a nice guy. I'm going to tell you this. 
women are not attracted to nice guys. They might say one thing, but it's different from the reality. And men, men will trample all over a nice guy. And how I, I, I knew this and I knew I needed to be around men early on was I got myself into the trades and I got myself around a circle of men. And quickly I realized that if I didn't establish myself in the pecking order, and whether you want to acknowledge it or not, there is a pecking order in every circle of man, a man doesn't matter how micro the situation is, that arises. Six guys in a room, there's immediately a hierarchy. And I always knew that if I established myself as a guy that didn't take any crap, that knew how to say no when he wanted to, that knew how to say yes, that knew how to give from himself when he has the resources to give without expectation of receiving, then I knew I wasn't going to be the bottom bitch of that job site. And the bottom bitch of that job site, the nice guy, usually never breaks out of that until he goes to the next job site. You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be thrashing around a, a passive bystander of your own life. So you need to establish yourself as a man that has boundaries, a man that has self-respect, and you need to let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. Because what does Jesus say to the church of Laodicea in the book of Revelations? You are neither hot nor cold, therefore I spit you out of my mouth. And nice guys are fundamentally lukewarm men that have no real self-worth, and they put their self-worth in what they think they could get from other people. And it's deceptive and it's manipulative. And a lot of these men don't realize this about themselves. But by continuing to say yes, by continuing to give when you have an empty cup, is going to just dig a huge hole in the bottom of that cup. And now you'll never be full. And that's not how we're called to give. We're called to give without the expectation of receiving. And so how does a nice guy defeat this in, in, a, tangible, in a tangible way? A lot of nice guys are usually not jacked or strong dudes. And I know this sounds meathead in elementary. Get yourself in a gym, start lifting weights, start building some self-belief. Because I know when I started to do this and I gained some physical confidence, I gained some mental and spiritual confidence as well. And by doing so, it increases your chances of just being respected without saying a word to. A lot of nice guys fundamentally lack respect from the people around them because they're doormats. Okay. Another thing is being able to carry yourself in a physical altercation if it were to arise. So getting yourself in a uh, uh, martial arts gym and learning how to fight, getting yourself into a brotherhood. I don't say this because I run a brotherhood. I say this because it is essential for every man to have a brotherhood. This will absolutely unshackle you from nice guy syndrome because you're not going to be able to get away with that crap within a circle of strong men that are focusing their attention on you and being able to snuff out or are trying to snuff out the flaws and the gifts within you. There's no BSing that. And that is actually being cognizant also of the nice guy syndrome and your natural proclivity to try to people please. Because by trying to perpetually pe people please, you are going to displease yourself and you're displeasing the Lord. Your yes is not a yes. Your no is not a no. A lot of those yeses are, they, 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 it buries and grows resentment in a man's heart. And then when he looks at it himself in the mirror, there's nothing staring back at him. He's a hollow vessel that's given him to himself. And because he's expected all of this to be uh, uh, given back to him in this weird reciprocity give and take, he's got nothing left. And he's got nothing but resentment, resentment and bitterness and anger in his heart. That's not how we're called to be. Okay. Getting strong, getting physically strong, physically jacked, physically formidable, formidable, being able to handle, handle yourself in a physical altercation, being around a group of men that are able to call you out. These are all tangible ways a guy can fix the nice guy syndrome. And another thing, and I said this at the beginning, is learning how to say no and getting into the practice of saying no. Okay, it's going to be intimidating. We're called to do things that are difficult. We're called to wear responsibility on our shoulders as men. And this is no different. There are times in my life where I should have said yes to things that I should have said no to. Fine. And vice versa. Right? But at least to a man that says no more often than he says yes, he might be maybe in some situations uh, infected with the spirit of pride. And I'm not saying that's a good thing. That's better. But it's better to be a man that says no more often than he says yes, because at least that man has self-respect and he garners the respect from other men as well. You need to kill the nice guy. And that's how you do it. Disconnect yourself from your brain and your psyche. Reconnect yourself with your stomach and that gut reaction that comes up in a situation that you usually say yes to, your body wants to say no to. And I see this in marriage all the time. They think by being this nice guy that takes out the trash or does this thing that they'll get a little pat on the head from their wives and they'll maybe get some duty, pity sex from them. And then when it doesn't happen, they wonder why their marriage is in shambles and they wonder why their marriage is infected with the dead bedroom syndrome. It's because you're a deeply bitter man. 
that does not know how to say no. You have no boundaries. You have no spine. And people walk all over you, and probably including your wife. And a man that gets walked all over is not a man that gets any respect. And my heart goes out to these men, right? So if you have a weird relationship with your mother, a codependent relationship with your mother, or any woman in your life, you need to cut that off. You got to set boundaries. And it's difficult, but you have to do that. You have to learn how to get into the rhythm of being uncomfortable and getting messy and repetitiously saying no to things. There are seasons in a man's life where he should say yes, and there are seasons in a man's life where he should say no. And to any nice guy that's watching this, you probably need to go through a season of no. Saying no to most things. Get into the practice of saying no. And watch you gain your spinal strength again, so to speak. And getting yourself in the gym and building some physical formidability, learning how to fight, getting yourself within a circle of men that can call you out on your bull crap, hold you accountable, and show you love all at the same time. All of these things are crucial. You want to lead your marriage better? Kill the nice guy. You want to be respected in a circle of men? Kill the nice guy. You want to be better in your job or your vocation? Kill the nice guy. You want to be a better representation of Christ in the faith? Kill the nice guy. And in my experience, coaching guys through those steps and through all of those things that I just told you tangibly, this is how a guy does it. But you're going to have to get your hands messy. It's not going to be an easy, smooth road, and nor should it be. Because when you come out the other end of that journey, you're going to realize that in those messy reps, you've honed in that skill of saying no. And now your no's are no's and your yeses are yeses. And that is exactly a place that every man should want to be in. That's all I'm going to say on nice guy syndrome. Kill the nice guy. God bless.